What took me so long to build this great old school model? I'll explain a bit while this string of empty stock cars backs down into a spur for loading. I have a cattle loading scene that really needed a barn for the horses, tools, and hay storage to support the feeding and loading of cattle. So two problems had to be solved. First was a small barn that looked like it belonged out west, and second, the room was lacking to install it. This was the fascia board that defined this edge of the scene until it was decided to expand it to the new fascia board boundary that would allow more land area for adding a barn. This is at the end of a viewing aisleway that really didn't need to be so deep and roomy. That tended to cramp the layout area and made the cattle loading facility also seem to overly dominate the entire scene's area. When the cattle pen area was first planned, this area was even expanded a bit to allow fitting the cattle pens in by adding along this arc you can see remnants of in the photo. So the fascia board and the ground area had to be moved and expanded again to include space for a barn this time. You can see the struts added to support the new fascia pine board. The original fascia boards were all made with flexible tempered masonite board. Here's a view from another angle. These wood pieces were glued to the back side to support the added pink foam board that is two inches thick. The pink foam is also supported on the two struts. A piece of two inch thick Owens Corning pink insulation foam was cut to fill in the void. It will be bonded in place using liquid nails to the struts and the back side of the new fascia board. Test it for a snug fit and trim as needed. Once satisfied with the fit, take the piece outdoors and rough the top surface up to resemble an earthen area. Now it's ready to bond in place with liquid nails applied to it with a low-cost caulking gun. I prepare with an old t-shirt or a roll of paper towels to clean my hands because I just smear gobs of it on with my hands to seal the foam and provide a base color more natural than pink. Let it cure overnight or more. Next is a coat of latex paint with the color that will resemble the soil you want to imitate. I also paint the fascia board with the same color. When the paint is dry, I use fine sifted dirt to cover the painted area. I find the right color in fine powdered dry soil in a local hiking park alongside the trail areas that are ground into a fine powder by people's footwear over the years. I use this fine screen sieve to get just the fine dust. The little tiny rocks can be saved for other projects. This is the powdered soil we need for now. I bond the soil and woodland scenic grass and bushes with their scenic cement and a similar product they offer called spray tack that comes in a spray bottle. I wet sections and sprinkle the dry sifted powder soil until everything looks like dirt. There are many YouTube videos on how to use all of these Woodland Scenic scenery products. I added patches of grass and some bushes, but left a bare area that resembles a dirt road of sorts leading to the new barn. Now we review and build this barn kit that I used. It is from the Alpine Division Scale Models Company. They have a number of kits that date back to the 1950 days of HO scale models by the old Ed Sidem company that are still offered today. This kit is made from what looks like a die cut and impressed heavy cardstock with the addition of many pre-cut pieces of basswood. It also has pieces to fashion a corral area for horses and a horse and other bits and pieces. This is the roofing material. It represents shingles. The model was built with this material and weathered a bit, but I plan on converting it to a rusty corrugated metal roof when the material arrives here. Most things are labeled such as these corner posts that are used in the very first steps of the instructions. I used yellow wood glue to bond the posts to the edges of the end walls. I let the glue dry under these flat weights to prevent warping. Just follow the instructions and a lot of the work will just follow your instincts if you've built other similar kits. I rarely ever built a kit to the full instructions. I generally see the value and potential in a kit I've selected and build things by my own path. I supplement the kits with relevant materials I have that can augment the model and make it fit in my own layout. In other words, I'm a kit basher of sorts. 
These packets of dimensional basswood are from Midwest Products that I've used to add some details. Here's a look into and around the finished model. I've added a pair of gated horse pins made from a Central Valley Fences and Railings kit. Added to the front and rear doors were rails the doors can slide open and closed on, and diagonal bracing as well as bottom horizontal beams on the bottom of the doors. The cardstock piece for the hayloft upper level was cut open to allow access with the provided ladder. The front small window was blocked by the doors being in the fully opened position. I built this mid-barn support and glued it to the bottom side of the hayloft level. It has simulated concrete footings. The perimeter of the barn has a block stone footing as well. The doors needed the added height to reach the ground level as a result. The hayloft has this added and braced arm to lift the hay bales up using a pulley and ropes to swing the bale into the opening. I took a photo of a block foundation long ago and printed it out to the right scale to add the single block level foundation rather than have the wood sit directly on dirt during rainy days. I cut the block height down to one level. The second level is presumably below the dirt so it won't show. So here it is planted in the scene with weathered paint. Now the cowboys that deal with the cattle have a place to house their horses and the barn serves as a tool and feed storage area. The worn dirt pathway leads away from the barn's front entrance. The barn blends in nicely with the windmill, water tank, and pump house to complete the support of the cattle pen area. The land extension actually added depth to the entire scenic area, which came as a surprise. Or maybe it's just my imagination, but it's all about illusions to improve your layout.